Oh, man. You guys are out. OG7 back here. No retreat and no surrender. That is beast mode law. And by beast mode law, we will stand and fight and die. So all the world will know that a few strong manly men gave the very last breath to defend masculinity against the hordes of feminism, feminist, in the gynocentric world. Guys, today's video is number four in a series of how does a man become. Today is how does a man become a PUA or a pickup artist? Well, in my opinion, it's men that are really tired and fed up of the poor treatment they get from women, of the poor treatment we get from society where we're treated as second-class citizens, disposable human beings, and just worker drone bees, right? Worker drone ants. We're just a working class. We do all the, the work from the sweat of our brow and from the the labor of our backs, right? And women enjoy all the benefits of it, the luxury, the luxuries of life, the finer things in life, right? And then we're tossed aside, right? So I think it's time to fight back. I think that a lot of guys that come to my channel, you know, I initially started as a MGTOW guy, right? And I got a lot of followers from MGTOW. And I think, you know, right on to the MGTOW guys, it more, you know, red pill, Manosphere, right on to you guys. But like I've, I've been speaking to you guys lately, I'm more into becoming a self-actualized man. And what that actually means is a man who is secure in his masculinity, even though our society is gynocentric and makes young boys nowadays and even young men feel bad for being a man. Like the traits that make you a man just because you have two, two balls that hang in your nutsack generate testosterone that hormone gives you certain traits and certain ideologies and mindsets in our society now a westernized culture is making men ashamed to be a man and making me ashamed to be masculine right and I think it's time to fight back so I wanted to start off by giving you guys my journey of how I went from being a bitch boy, a fat bitch boy dominated by my ex-wife. She like closed me off from my friends, had me lose jobs. I did all the cooking and cleaning in the fucking house, took care of the fucking kids. I had a honey-do list longer than my fucking arm. And I was never appreciated and she just cheated on me with the bad boys and, and they commented how hot the bad boys were while well, I'm paying all her fucking bills, dude. She quit her fucking job. I just supported her. So I wanted to talk to you personally about my journey of how I became, uh, went from being a little fat little bitch boy, manservant, right, a mangina, to what I call a self-actualized man. There's many different steps. But the first thing I wanted to share with you guys is like, um, after she took me to court, took my house, my cars, my kids, got me locked out, got me kicked out of my job, dude. So after I got out of the county jail after these false charges. I lost my job because my it was a defamation of character in the community. And I don't know where you guys live here. I don't know if some of you guys are in the United States, Europe, um, Asia. I don't know. But I know here in the United States, or I don't know if you guys are in Canada or Australia. Wherever you are, it's, it's all the same because it's called the urbanization. <laughs> like They had the saying called the urbanization of America. And now it's the westernization of the world. So all the urbanization of America is like everybody, everybody is it's cool to be into hip hop and being a gangster, right? And the inner city gear and the inner city pop culture, right? They're 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 blasting across mainstream like it's cool, but it only ends you up in the penitentiary, man, or the graveyard. But the, what I wanted to speak to you guys about is basically. Um, how I came to this self-actualization. So what it came down to is after losing my job, as I told you guys, I was homeless, dude. So that we had a joint bank account. Not only did she clean out my bank account, but she put it in the negative. We had several bank accounts together. She put them into negatives, bro. 
So then uh, I had direct deposits from my jobs. Lost my jobs, couldn't get them back. I had serious felonies on my jacket. So um, just so you know, if you're in the information communication technology field, just because you're dealing with banks and financial institutions and hospitals and uh, police departments, sheriff's departments, governmental entities, you got to do a full background check. So then that would pop up on there. They got me for uh, for a kidnapping, attempted murder, assault with a deadly weapon, child endangerment, just because the fucking horror cut her breast, man. When I told her I, I didn't want to be married anymore, I'm getting rid of her and she wanted to leave. And she, you know, she got violent and I act like I was calling the authorities, which I shouldn't have did that. I just, I called my boss and I act like I was talking to the 911 dispatcher. And then she goes, oh, you silly fucker. You want to call the cops, I'll show you. So she ran in the kitchen. You know, you got the big butcher knives for, um, you know, when you're cutting large cuts of meat, right? And she slid her wrist across, dude, and blood starts squirting all over, all over the place. Kids are screaming, everything. And I guess the neighbors heard it. And so, uh, I, uh, I, you know, I'm a martial artist, so I grabbed her hand. It's called a Kota Gaish. I grabbed her hand and had a knife, and I just twisted it. I twisted her thumb. Uh, toward the inside of her body which released the knife but con concurrently the cops had been dispatched you know and then when they knocked on the door and we didn't actually kick the door in I'm standing there with a the knife in my hand and blood squirted all over me her blood right so it's circumstantial evidence but the point I'm making is after 30 days of being in the county jail because I couldn't bail out I didn't have any fucking money in my accounts right finally get out go to work they're like we don't hire we don't have people like you working here you're a kidnapper attempted murderer and a wife beater and uh you're just a bad person and so then dude check this out guys i fought that case for a year dude it cost me over a hundred thousand dollars and then in the process you know just getting divorced and everything another hundred thousand on top of that i was homeless man without a job so dude I'm building up this back character reference for you guys always talking about get to the point. I'm building up the character reference so you understand. I was devastated, dude. Totally devastated. Went from making $200,000 a year to being a homeless dude who has felonies on his jacket for kidnapping, attempted murder, a child endangerment. Those are bad raps to have on your jacket. So I couldn't get a job, man. So before I got the eviction notice on my apartment that I had, I was just, man, drinking myself silly. I was just drinking a lot of whiskey and scotch and vodka, just drinking and crying myself to sleep, dude. Just living in a place with no furniture, right? So I just happened to, uh, I think I got a job. I don't want to lie here. I'm trying to remember. I got a job at Walmart, guys. Yeah. I got a job at Walmart. And the thing I like about Walmart, thumbs up to Walmart, man. Walmart will hire anybody, dude. They hire uh, disabled people. They hire criminals, dude. They hire drug addicts. And I think that's a good thing because you got to give people a chance, dude. We all make mistakes, dude. Everybody makes mistakes. There's no perfect person in this world unless you believe in the Jesus Christ story. Or maybe you believe in the Muhammad story or Buddha story. I don't know. But as far as the rest of us mere mortals, we all make mistakes, dude. Let me tell you something, man. If you're a young guy, don't judge a person till you've walked them out in their moccasins or you walk in their shoes. Because, dude, prior to um, having my involuntary manslaughter charges that sent me to prison I was a model citizen dude I paid my taxes dude I helped old ladies cross the street dude I pet little doggies and kitty cats bro I was a I was a pillar in the community dude and then one incident just changed my entire life dude it got part of an attempted robbery and I guess the authorities said I overreacted and two men ended up losing their lives and then I got put in a penal system, bro. And it just um, it just changed my life. So after 10 years of that, it came out. 
I reinvented myself, dude. I'm like the original Phoenix. I reinvented myself. I just applied myself. I got a Pell Grant for people that have been incarcerated. In California, I have a Pell Grant. You can go to school. I went to community college, studied computers. I worked construction during the day because I was ripped up and swole and I studied computers. Got into, I got a good break, got into the information communication technology sector and just took off. And so maybe it was the timing. Maybe it was my personality, maybe it was my hunger, I don't know. But with a matter of two years, or three years actually, I was making 200000 a year. And so then it's, I was just living a single life. And then I'm going to tell you something about women in America, or westernized nations. When you're doing good and you have affluence and a lot of discretionary cash, dude, they are your jock strap. Like uh, dogs in heat, dude. You ever see dogs in heat? Or any animal in heat, they just constantly chase the other. The males constantly chase the females. But here's the other way around: the females are constantly in your face. And I, you know, I had did ten years in prison. I didn't understand why I was getting all that female attention, but they could smell money on you. So then I meet my ex-wife, dude, and we get married and everything because she got she ended up pregnant and everything. And so then uh, she couldn't work because she had a difficult pregnancy due to my mixed ethnicity I guess I don't know if it was the blood type of the baby or whatever but she couldn't work so I supported her it didn't matter I'm making 200000 a year that's a lot of discretionary cash so I supported her she just had a lavish lifestyle she went from making her 30000 a year to living a lifestyle that's afforded for 200000 a year and it's okay she's carrying my kid but then dude after the, the first baby dude she just started women are funny dude once they get that baby then they, they learn that they have a power over you or a hold over you. I didn't know that. See, I was an ignorant fuck. But once they have a baby, dude, and they've cohabitated with you for over a year, now you are locked into indentured servitude, and you become a bitch boy. And then all of a sudden, they tell you, oh, you can't hang out with your friends. You can't go shoot pool with your friends. You can't go play darts. You can't go bowling. You can't lift weights with your friends. You can't do marks. They just demanding stuff, and you, you put up with it, guys. Well, I'm going to say I'll put it with it because you have a fear of what's called couch duty. So all couch duty is if your wife is pissed off and you have, you're dumb enough to have her name on the fucking mortgage and on the uh, the title of the home, she can tell you, oh, well, you can, you sleep on the couch because I'm mad at you. And what she'll do while you're sleeping on the couch, she'll parade around the house in her Victoria's Secrets kept crouching panties. You know what I mean? And the bras without the, without the, the she'll nipples poking through, man. And she walked past you and bend over in front of the refrigerator, in front of the TV and shit, and you can't even hit it. So they can, they can, your wife can file rape charges against you, even though she's your wife. So, after 10 years of just being bitch boy servitude, man, just working fucking 16 hours a day, 7 days a week to make her happy. Because women get addicted to money. I got fat, I got out of shape, and she was feed me a bunch of poor quality fucking bullshit. I lost my muscles, dude. I didn't do martial arts anymore. I became a fat little bitch boy um, drone workers in servitude. Fucking mangina. So, just after being fed up with that lifestyle, her cheating on me, man, and just demeaning me and everything, we just got into the thing, and like I said, we got the divorce. She got everything, dude. I didn't know that in America, they could butt fuck you and rape you like that and take all your stuff. So here I am, living in an empty apartment, dude. And I'm getting evicted, and I'm just drinking a lot, bro. So I got lucky, and I got this job at Walmart. So I met this dude, man, and he turned me on to MGTOW. Men going your own way. He was divorced and angry. I was divorced and angry. We are watching these MGTOW videos, bro. And I'm going to tell you something, bro. It helped me to find a place to park my anger, dude. Like, to release my anger and to embrace it. And I think it's important when you're angry or sad or mad or whatever to experience that emotion. Because as men in America and our westernized cultures, we are taught to suppress our emotions, bro. We are taught to control our emotions. We are taught to not experience our emotions. And I got it. There's a reason for that. Because we have to be the rock. 
that her wave buffers against, right? Breaks against. I got it. But dude, I didn't have a reason to do all that, so I really got drunk. I just cried a lot. And I watched I watched uh, Angry MGTOW, and I watched this dude named Alex, bro. And then I got turned on to Sandman and Barbar Bar and uh, just some other really cool guys who weren't as angry, but they started explaining female psychology, guys. And so even though I have a, I have a degree in psychology and major in female psychology, like 10 years of being incarcerated in prison just trying not to get butt fucked, bro, by the fucking lifers who are homosexuals. All lifers in prison, the big strong dudes are homosexuals, bro. I mean, they're never getting out. They want to release their nutsack, but they're not doing it in my butt crack, bro. I don't fall like that. So you just can imagine it's like gladiator school, bro. Every day you, you unlock your cell, you got to fight for your manhood. So you got 10 years of that, then you get then you get out and you make money. Then you The, the first woman that shows you some attention, you marry her, bro. And then you got 10 years of servitude. So you kind of lose what you, you forget more than what you've ever learned. So the point I'm making is... uh. I got through the MGTOW and I was doing Sandman and Barbar Bar and uh, there was a couple other ones that really made some good sense, man. And But then I met this guy, man. He turned me on to David D'Angelo because he saw that I was a fat bitch boy. I didn't have any luck with women and I got over my anger. And he was like, dude, I'm going to hook you up. So he hooked me up with this binder from David D'Angelo. And I want to fast forward what happened I signed up for his email campaign I read the binder it was called double your dating so he would send you emails every day I read the books double your dating attraction is not a choice and he had these uh, DVDs you listen to man and dude there was a miraculous transformation that came over me and that's why I had to make this video for you guys because the way a man becomes a PUA or a pickup artist is you get tired of women treating you badly you get tired of women ignoring you. you get tired of women make you feel like you're an invisible man you're not worth shit like who the fuck are they to make us seek female validation it's all because of the way society has wired our brains dude through this matrix of gynocentrism that we think women are the prize we we got to twist it and turn around like topsy-turvy and so the way a man really becomes a pickup artist, and this is very important for you incels and you TFLs and MGTOWs, this is mo really important for MGTOWs, is you get to the point where you're so fucking angry with women that you want to start fighting back. And I don't know if you've ever been bullied. Like, when I was a kid, I was a little kid, man. I moved to this country. I used to get my ass kicked because I was an underdeveloped kid. Couldn't speak English. Couldn't run fast. And just gets my ass handed to me, dude. And so... Just after a year of that, my dad decided to put us into martial arts. Pull up me specifically, put me into martial arts, bro. Because I got tired of getting my ass kicked. So if you're ever in a situation where you ever live in a neighborhood or an, an area or a body or a, a venue where you feel aggressed upon every day, daily, or maybe you're robbed, or maybe you're in prison, like there's this movie called Shim Shack Reduction, Redemption, with Morgan Freeman. And you're just getting tired of getting butt fucked, bro. You, when you get when you reach a point where you're tired and you've said enough is enough, then you start to fight back. And this is the point I want to make to you, MGTOW guys who have a problem with PUA community and you incels and TFLs be like, Hey, I don't want to be a PUA. They're slimy, man. And they're manipulative and they're creepy. Hey, man, who the fuck put those labels on those guys? I'm going to tell you who did it. It was women. Because one thing I found, guys, when I got into the pickup artist community, yeah, there's a lot of bullshit, dude. There's a lot of skullduggery. I got it. We got it. We understand. It's a lot of fucking trickery, taking your money. A lot of those pickup artists don't even fucking get laid, bro. They're just con men, snake oil stuff. I got that. But what I'm sharing with you guys, like the five years where I totally immersed myself into the pickup artist community, I learned two valuable things, man, really three. Number one, I learned a lot about female psychology, like the stuff I have forgotten. And so here's, let me make this clear. My degree is in female psychology, but when you go to these gynocentric universities that fucking get you in debt, fucking with your student loans and all this fucking bullshit, the, the, the stuff they teach you about female psychology is like stuff about, oh, you know, how a woman is maternal and... They have to be intuitive because the baby's born inside of them and 
you know, they're, they're the weaker species and women have rights to go to school and have a job. Like, they don't go into the fact of hypergamy, dude, the monkey branching, bro. And the fucking, what's it called? Scottsdale syndrome where women just can dump you one day and have a boyfriend the next day. Or even prior to them dumping you, they monkey branch to another dude. Because a woman is like this, dude. It's like, what's, it, this is the name of it. What have you done for me lately? So... As long as you're like the best option available in your area or your community, dude, you're in the game, bro. But as soon as another new dude comes into town, whether he's a foreign dude or a rich dude or a movie star dude or a famous dude or whatever, or he's got more value in the community than you, than you have, bro, trust me when I tell you this, bro. Women are always pining for the next higher position, dude. Keep that in mind. So that's why I always tell you guys about the cock carousel. When you have a girlfriend or a woman or a wife, it's just your turn to bang her or even a friend with benefits because that, that, that time frame is going to be short-lived, whether it's a year, two years, a month, <coughs> a week, or whatever. So the point I wanted to make is there's a lot of stuff in the MGTOW, Ipmar, community, fucking Manosphere, and the hatred of women it just oh you know I don't want to deal with women I hate them but let me tell you a secret guys if you really 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 hate something bro you get vindictive you get a vindictive I want to get some get back type of a mentality and I'm going to tell you the best way to get back at women is to learn female psychology I mean true female psychology like on a pickup artistry level so that then you can manipulate them like they've been manipulating us you can then dominate them like they've been dominating us. I think the best course of action to cure a bully is to bully the bully. Yeah, I said that. Because I remember when I was a kid, I used to get my ass handed to me. And even when I started learning martial arts, let me tell you something about martial arts. It's not some magical fucking Bruce Lee, fucking Jackie Chan, Jet Lee bullshit, you know, crouching tiger, flying dragons, whatever the fuck. Dude, it's, it's realistic, man. It comes down to you still got to have some type of strength and size to you in order to appropriately utilize the angles and the physics, man. You can't be some wimpy little fat bitch boy. So I was a little skinny kid, and I knew some more shirts. Like, I could defend myself, but I wasn't successfully beating the dog shit out of guys until I hit, like, 14, and I hit a growth spurt, and I put on a lot of muscle. So what, what, what I did then, guys, and I'm not proud of it, but maybe you guys can have some compassion for me. I'd go around to all the guys used to fucking kick my ass and start fighting with me. I'd just beat the dog shit out of them. Like, I'd be at a party, or I'd be at the supermarket, or I'd be just walking down the street, or I'd be on the bus, and i see a guy, like, hey, you your name Bob? Go, yeah. Like, remember that time you beat the shit out of me, man, in school? No, man, i never do that. Well, I remember, and I'd pay him back. So I think what I'm trying to say is the best cure for a bully is to bully the bully right so what I'm saying to you is oh it's Jesus Christ man I just dropped my monitor what I'm saying to you guys is if you truly hate women like you say you do then the best course of action is to get back at them by becoming a PUA and learning to manipulate them dude and to dominate them and to get some payback so that's how a man becomes a pickup artist Contrary to what you MGTOW guys think, or what you incels or TFLs think. And even though, here I got a, so we can have a group mind thing. I got the acronym from Online Dictionary. It says PUA, acronym for pickup artist. That is a person who is skilled at attracting people, usually used in the context of attracting people for the purpose of casual sex. Right? And I gave you a bunch of other definitions some of them I don't, de I don't necessarily agree with, but I wanted to be fair and show you what's on the internet. But I'm just sharing with you and my fellow men, my manly men, fellows, that the way a man becomes a pickup artist is he's tired of the treatment, the poor treatment he's getting from women in society, bro, where women think they're the prize and we have to kiss their ass. We got to kowtow to them. I say it's time that we fight back as men. Now, I'm not saying you have to become a slimy if I can uh, approach machine picker bars, what I'm saying is it would behoove you as a man to have this tool in your arsenal to learn how women think and how they really view men and then learn how to use it like judo. What I like about judo and jujitsu 
it's the art of passive aggression. So what that means is the harder an opponent attacks you, the more you relax and you turn their energy against them. And that's what we're going to do with these fucking whorish women who think they can just manipulate men. It's up to the next time. OG sit back. Out. Over my head Yeah, over my head